Where does your provision come from? Heaven. Don't you ever forget it. It's not your job. It's not your parents. It's not in any other place but from heaven. It comes from God. So it is a divine provision that is taking place in the lives of the Israelites. And when you look back over your life and even look at your life right now, it is a divine provision that is taking place in your life. You understand this? And why is this happening? The reason it is happening, he said, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. <laughs> Somebody say, it's only a test. And you will pass the test when you complete the entire instructions that he has given. And you have to believe God that no matter what happens, tomorrow is always going to be better than your today. That the provision for tomorrow will be even greater than the provision for today. You understand this? So, so, don't, so listen, when you, when you try to make things happen on your own, it won't work out. Because God doesn't want you trying to replace him with you. You hear me? Okay. So, so when you belong to God, God has great uh, expectations for you. Because God wants to teach you how to trust him. And, and when you learn how to trust him, that's why the scripture says in, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, if you observe all of my laws and my decrees, if you, if you, Every blessing that God wants to give to you is dependent upon you being obedient to his instruction. Do you hear me? A person who doesn't give or tithe cannot claim the promises of God as it pertains to him opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out blessings on their lives that they have not room enough to receive. That is not the promise that they can claim because they are now obeying the instructions. When our passions are more for worldly things than it is for godly things, we are far away from God. I don't care if you go to church because there's folk that go to church whose passion is for worldly things, more for worldly things than it is for God. You are far away from God. And, and you have to, if you're going to become hungry for God, you're going to have to remove certain things out of your life that is not like God in order for you to begin to develop that hunger for God. As long as God's love is on guard, as long as God love, God's love covers us, nothing will consume us because he loves us more. Love is greater than the storm.